suffering one of the worst humanitarian crises in recent history after a year of war which erupted between the Sudanese armed forces and the rapid support forces on April 15, 2023. More than 10 million Sudanese are facing acute food insecurity in Sudan. But the humanitarian response is deeply inadequate. MSF, or Doctors Without Borders, has responded to multiple mass casualty emergencies within the last year. But their efforts, however much needed, are a drop in the ocean, bearing in mind the enormous challenges present. We'll be having that discussion today on the dire humanitarian crisis in Sudan. And with me, I'm joined by Kennedy Olela, Deputy Operations Manager, MSF. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for choosing us. Thank you for Let's get, having me. Thank you. Let's get right into it. How yeah. dire is the situation in Sudan? Um, I want to start by saying that uh, <coughs> the Sudan crisis is a forgotten crisis. They are incredible high needs, high humanitarian needs in Sudan. And as MSF, we can only do that much. We cannot cover everything, the needs of the people of Sudan. Mm -hmm. So we are actually appealing, you know, to the international community, international donors, mm -hmm. you know, to come in and support Sudan. Mm -hmm. There are huge needs, both medical and humanitarian needs, that uh, as MSF, we cannot provide everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from a report that uh, you shared with us, you talked about vaccines running out, you know, children, <laughs> deaths of mortality, children increasing and so on and so forth. Perhaps you, because you're one of the teams that are on the ground, you can paint to us a picture of how the situation actually is and why there is need for other humanitarian aid to come in. Um, since the beginning of the war, you know, MSF, we've been trying to, to ensure that uh, we provide medical health care and other humanitarian needs. Mm. But the huge challenges that we have are the impediment uh, challenges that we are not able to bring, you know, the needed uh, vaccines, the needed medicine and non-medical items mm -hmm. into, into Sudan. Mm -hmm. Like we have outbreaks of preventable diseases like measles that needs, you know, vaccination. Mm -hmm. In a normal setup, you know, there would be routine vaccination to, to children under five. But we've not been able to do this because we are not able to bring in the, the, the vaccines that are required. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So you also are asking for UN to step in. Remember, currently we have the war in Gaza and so on and so forth. So maybe sure. some humanitarian aids are moving from Sudan. As you said earlier, it's forgotten. So what really should be done? I think the most important thing is to consider Sudan as any other conflict in the world. Mm -hmm. People are suffering the same way people are suffering in Gaza, like you've mentioned, yes. in Ukraine. It's the same way. Mm -hmm. The scale of uh, violence in Sudan has been, you know, increasing on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. More and more needs, you know, people are displaced from their houses, from their homes. You know, facilities are not working. Over 70 to 80 percent of the health, health centers, health facilities are not functional. Mm -hmm. Of course, as MSF, we are, we are supporting around 30 health facilities in Sudan, mm -hmm. but this is just a drop, a, a drop in an ocean like you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So we're calling upon all the international donors, the UN, uh, the, the WHOs, to be able to provide the needed healthcare services for the people of Sudan. All right, and uh, perhaps when we, when we talk about uh, your organization, mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges that you're facing in terms of <coughs> just not the support that you need from other humanitarian mm -hmm. aids, but as an organization, what are some of the challenges that you guys are facing? One of the, the major challenges that we, we face is access. Mm -hmm. You know, we are not able to access populations that need services. Mm -hmm. Population also are not able to access MSF, uh, you know, facilities that we are supporting mm -hmm. because of insecurity, because of the ongoing conflict. So people have to navigate, you know, in secure areas to be able to access uh, the facilities. Mm -hmm. They need to work long hours to be able to access in those insecure areas. Mm -hmm. So access to the population, you know, supplies that we need for the services mm -hmm. are not, we are not able to bring in those supplies because mm -hmm. the only functioning uh, airport now in, in Sudan is Port Sudan mm -hmm. and getting those, you know, supplies out of, out of Port Sudan to the areas where we support has been a major, major challenge because of blockade. Mm -hmm. You know, and as, at the same time, getting the, the, the healthcare workers, the international uh, you know, staffs to be able to get in, to be able to support mm -hmm. in those facilities that we are working in. Mm -hmm. The way you're painting it, you're painting it as though you guys are heading into a danger zone. Have you had any of your colleagues that, 
you know, have been affected in the, in the line of duty? And how do you come well, up with such? Well, these are not specifics, but, you know, people are, the population is affected, you know, mm -hmm. the general population, including our, our staffs, locally hired staffs, mm -hmm. who are the indigenous of Sudan. Mm -hmm. So it's not that they are targeted, but they are caught in that, 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 uh, that conflict, yeah. that some of the staffs, their families are affected. Mm -hmm. So it's everyone in Sudan is affected. Mm -hmm. So perhaps what should be done in order to achieve a protection and security in Sudan? I think the international community have a responsibility. As you mentioned about Gaza, you mentioned about it, Ukraine, mm -hmm. the people in Sudan also need protection. Mm -hmm. And they also need services. There are human, uh, there are humanitarian needs, both you know, non-medical and medical. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the international community need to step up. You know, an increase in you know, services into Sudan because as MSF alone, we cannot provide everything. Mm -hmm. We can provide that much, but there are huge needs in Sudan. Mm -hmm. You know, cutting across malnutrition, as you have mentioned, outbreaks like measles, cholera, you know, all these diseases, malaria, you know, and other non communicable diseases, you know, people with chronic illnesses, they need medication. Mm -hmm. uh, these are some of the, the areas that need to be funded as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Food as well, clean water. These are all missing because of the situation in Sudan. Mm -hmm. When it comes to insecurity, or you know, uh, mostly insecurities, women <coughs> and children are the most affected. Yeah. Perhaps you can talk to us about how women and children are particularly affected from your report or from your research in, in Sudan, and what you guys are doing about it. No. Yeah, it's not specifically to women and children. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned before, the whole population of Sudan is affected. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, women are affected in terms of, you know, pregnant mothers, they will need to go to the antenatal care services for, for, for services. They need, uh, you know, vaccination for the children, mm -hmm. deliveries that are needed, you know, some deliveries are complicated and therefore they will need surgical interventions, cesarean sections. So without the medical supplies and equipment, as MSF, we are not able to do this. Mm -hmm. As we speak now, we talk about malnutrition, malnutrition in North Darfur in Samsam camp. Quite a number of children are malnourished, and maybe as we speak now, one child is dying because of malnutrition mm -hmm. today. Because the, because of the war, the people have not been able to cultivate and have their crops where they could get that food. So they need humanitarian assistance, they need food assistance, mm -hmm. so that they can be, you know, survive. And when we say that they need food and they need all uh, foods and all that, perhaps as an organization, what do you guys? Have you partnered with other organizations that as, help you through? Yeah, as MSF, we are engaging with all the partners. You know, we are advocating for the partners to come in so that they can cover those gaps. As mm -hmm. I mentioned, MSF, we cannot provide everything. There are gaps. We can provide medical services. Yeah. They are not enough because the needs are huge. Mm -hmm. So we are partnering and also advocating for the international community to be able to come in and, and fill in those gaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And perhaps if I can take you back just to the, con the concept of doctors without borders, mm -hmm. perhaps you could talk to us, to our audience about that. What is it? MSF is an international medical organization, emergency medical organization. Mm -hmm. So we provide care in conflict regions, in outbreaks, in man-made or natural um, outbreaks. So like Sudan, MSF has been there for many years. So this war started when we already having activities in Sudan, provided medical care mm -hmm. in different parts of Sudan, including you know, uh, other parts in like Khartoum itself. So we are providing care without you know, taking any side. So we are an international emergency medical organization mm -hmm. provide, con providing medical and humanitarian services to mm -hmm. assistance to the population without any discrimination. Mm -hmm. So perhaps apart from Sudan, are you based anywhere else? Well, MSF is working in around 71 countries in the world mm -hmm. where we provide humanitarian medical assistance to the population affected mm -hmm. either by conflicts, by natural disaster or man-made disaster, mm -hmm. outbreak, disease outbreaks as well. All right, perhaps from your research, if nothing is done in the, in the coming years, what will be the dire consequence of that? I think it's clear that there are human, uh, huge needs in Sudan. So if nothing is done, then this is a generation that might be lost because people have been displaced internally and externally in neighboring countries mm -hmm. like Sudan and Chad, you know, taking refugees and IDPs in the country. Mm -hmm. So this is, the situation is dire if something is not done and it needs to be done immediately because the, the situation is really, really bad. 
All right. Uh, perhaps maybe your parting shot as we almost wrap up. My parting shot is to call on the international community to put Sudan in the picture and to bring assistance into Sudan. Mm -hmm. and, but before we wrap up, ap apart from some of the organizations, homogeneous organizations that, ha that have left, mm -hmm. is, th is there a good number that has remained that is helping you guys or what is it? Largely is MSF in Sudan. We okay. see, you know, the WHO is there, you know, World Food Program, but, you know, the mm -hmm. UN agencies are there, but they are not doing that much. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that if the international community, the international organization can step up assistance into mm -hmm. Sudan, mm -hmm. then that would be great. You had also written to UN to stand in. Have you maybe gotten any response from that? Um, this is dealt with at an international level, so mm -hmm. our team at international level will be in a position to answer that. But. Mm -hmm. You know, engagement is ongoing everywhere around the world. Mm -hmm. So I believe that uh, this has been taken up at the international level. All right. Well, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Uh, in the endeavors of the organization. Thank you. Right. Now on to other stories now. U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump says laws against abortion should continue to be made.